Give a question to someone here. And you just don't have to do anything. You just have to hold on to that for me. I said, just put it on the floor or in your lap or whatever, but I just want to make sure that I've made it clear. I gave that to you before anything that we're about to do, right? My hands, because I'm going to use your imagination. If I were to go like this and grab something out of the air, sir, what did I just grab out of the air? A feather. And it's excellent. Now, I didn't grab anything, but you saw in your mind, you saw. Who said quarter? Who's the, who's the guy who's specific? Are you an engineer, sir? Are you an engineer? Joan, all I'd like you to do is use your imagination. Suspend your disbelief for a second because this is going to be cool. You're going to imagine and I'm going to lie. That's what I do. So with your imagination, just I'll hold it right in front of you. Just um, can you can you see the date? Yes. You, you can. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So using your imagination, we're going to create a great illusion. Um, really, you can see it. What's the date? Um, 1937. That's some serious conviction. She's I'm I almost believe her, don't you? Now, I left an envelope here with Denise. Denise, would you take the envelope? You feel two things inside there. There's a piece of paper. There's also something at the base of that envelope. What do you feel? Does it feel like a quarter to you? Leave the piece of paper in, but un unfold the envelope and uh, dump it out for me. There should be something else inside there. There should be that quarter. Dump the quarter into your hand, and I'm going to show you something really cool. It's like a switchblade for nerds. Uh, <laughs> Be able to tell everyone what the date is on that quarter? It is actually 1997. That is fantastic. That is quite imagination. You Everything I'm doing is a matter of perspective. Obviously, it can't do the impossible. Otherwise, it wouldn't be impossible. So, everyone on this side will call the right half of the audience. Everyone on this side will be the wrong, I mean, the left side of the audience. What's going to happen here is I'm going to try and control how you see things. You said frog, you said horse. Well, you know, you're both right. I gave you the same information. I just showed it to you in two different ways. <laughs> what if you couldn't help know the future? What if I only knew the future? Suddenly, like, surprise birthday parties wouldn't be any fun. I wrote down a word. I put it in an envelope that I gave to Denise at the very beginning of the show. You've had that. I haven't, it's gone, gone out of your sight. It's been there the whole time, right, Denise? Yes. Okay. Here's the idea. I wrote down a word. I want you to pick any word except the one I wrote down. And that way, I figure if I can get my prediction wrong, maybe I can go back to some sort of sense of surprise, right? If I get that prediction wrong, every prediction will be wrong. And then I'll be surprised by things. I'll go back to normalcy. And, and you guys think I'm strange, but that's fine. Um, it's just think of what I will pick one of those books. Which one would you like to use? Choke. Excellent. Good choice. It's one of my favorites, actually. Um, all I'd like you to do is you're going to pick a word from that book, so open the book to any page you want. Just open. All that has to happen is the word in that envelope does not match what Elisa just chose. So let's see how, how we did. It's a pretty good chance of this not working. And open it up. Would you read the word out loud so everyone can hear, please? The one in the book. What is it? Really? After. Open it. What does that say? After. 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 Really? It says after? <laughs> Elisa, ladies and gentlemen. It's not your fault, Elisa. <sighs> Rasheen, I'm going to ask you to write your name across the face of one of these cards. Let's... Everyone take a good look. That's Rasheen's card. Come on, everyone mix up your cards as much as you want. Shuffle them however you want. Mix them face up, face down. It doesn't matter. If you happen to pass Rasheen's card, keep shuffling past it. I don't want you to know where it is. I don't want to know where it is. What's different about this Rubik's Cube compared to others? It does have numbers on it. It has numbers from one to nine on each of the six sides. Penny, you mixed up that Rubik's Cube, which is a lot easier than solving it, I'll tell you that much. But but um, are you satisfied that you mixed it up as much as you wanted? Uh, yes. Yes, okay, cool. Here, me, please. All I'd like you to do is to read out those numbers. I'm going to write them down. Say, let's take a look at that top row. What is that top row? Eight plus one is nine plus six, 15. Look at the second row where you stopped. Three plus five is eight plus seven is 15. You stopped on the side with the four and the nine, but the two is 15. Top to bottom adds up two. Look at that. Six, seven, 13 is 15. One and five is six plus nine is 15. Eight and three is uh, 11 plus four is 15. Every single, wait, there's one more. Take a look at this diagonally. You've got six and five is 11 plus four is 15. Penny, I don't know how you did that. Eight plus five is 13 plus two is 15. That's pretty amazing right there, what, what Penny did. Nicely done, Penny. Take the cards out of the box. Make sure you have them all. Go ahead and deal them out and count out loud with us until we get to 15, one at a time. One, two, three, 13, 14, turn it over, see how you did. Rasheen's card, 15 card, that's impossible, guys. I don't know how you did, wonderful card. You take that with you, thank you very much. You can have this if you want, otherwise I'll show you.